Hey guys, welcome to episode number 584. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and today we are back outside in the greenhouse to work on more projects. We have an exciting announcement. We are tearing down the fish room, and all of the fish are moving out here to the greenhouse for the summer while I completely renovate the fish room. But before we can get to that, we need to eliminate the green water from the outdoor system here, and we need to get a lot of our plants situated for the summer. So, we've got a lot to cover in this week's video, but before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want to help support this channel, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com. All right, guys. The sun is setting already. We've got some stuff to look at outside. We've got some stuff to look at inside the greenhouse. So let's get going. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, guys, we're gonna start with a couple of the outdoor projects out here by the thousand gallon pond. Now, if you are in the market for a fish room, specifically my fish room, all of the 40 gallon breeder tanks and the rack is currently for sale for the bargain basement price of $600. All you have to do is come here with a truck or a trailer and pick it all up. Once that's out of the way, I will be able to install my new 50 gallon Zoomed Low Boy rack and tank system. I'm really excited to start on that. We just need to clear out some space in the basement so that we can do that. But before we get there, we need to move all of our fish outdoors. And before we can do that, we've got to solve the green water algae problem that we're having out here in the pond. Now, this is not getting any better with water changes. Uh, this is something that just needs to be fixed with this diatomaceous earth filter. And that is over here and ready to go. I've dug out my piping that goes from the pond into the greenhouse so that's ready to go and I've even picked up all of the parts and made a quick diagram here of this filter showing exactly how it works and here's how it works what we're gonna do is take this black line that comes from our pump and put it into the bottom here Water is going to raise up through here and then what will happen is the water will come out up here and then the black line is going to continue from up here back down through the ground here and then reconnect to the fish system. So we're just adding this um, canister filter basically, diatomaceous earth filter to the line that already exists. Now, there's two other outlets that exist on this filter. The one on the bottom here is the drain line. And that's gonna have a ball valve on it over here. In case I ever wanna completely drain this filter, shut the power off and just open the ball valve, I can completely drain it. And then the other thing that we have here is our bump handle, which is up here. And that's gonna act as a bypass to send our water out uh, of this system in the event that this starts to get clogged up. So we've got our pressure gauge here. Whenever those fingers inside this filter are getting plugged up, we'll be able to uh, just crank on this and um, loosen it up. Loosen up all of the sediment, loosen up all of the junk that's inside it, and send that out the bypass out over into the shrubs. So, all of our parts are here, our hole is dug, we've got our plan, all that we have to do now is hook it up. So this is a, the biggest project I have for this week, is to just get all the plumbing hooked up. Now, we've also got to say hello to a special friend out here. This is Marvin. <laughs> we picked up Marvin a number of years ago, and uh, he's been chilling out in our backyard for I'd say a solid five years, and he's come to explore the pond. 
So he's going to be hanging out here by the filter, watching over the pond all summer long. All right, we've got a number of plants to look at inside the greenhouse. Some of those have been planted in soil, and I'm now ready to bring those outdoors and plant those outdoors so we can move all of the soil out of the greenhouse. So let's get working on that project now. Okay, check this out. We haven't checked in on these vegetables in probably a few weeks. And as you can see, we have some tremendous growth. Uh, so much so that I would say that all of these have outgrown the uh, starter pots that they're in currently. So we've got a bunch of zucchinis here. We've got a bunch of cherry tomatoes back here. This entire tray is summer squash here. And then we have a lot of string beans back here and some more uh, tomato plants sort of poking out uh, back behind there. So all of these are coming out of the greenhouse today and they're moving outdoors into some fabric pots. Uh, I didn't want to do a traditional raised bed. I wanted something that I could move around if I needed to, especially if I had yard work to do or whatever. Something very impermanent um, and so I chose fabric pots. So what we're gonna do is probably give these guys one last water in here and then we're gonna go fill up those pots and then transplant these guys outdoors. Interestingly enough, we do have one odd plant that started in here. And as you guys may recall, like six months ago, I did actually plant seeds in these trays and they never started. So I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's something that I tried to plant six months ago and it finally sprouted. So we'll have to keep that guy indoors here and uh, see what he actually turns into. But anyways, guys, here are the land-based terrestrial um, soil plants. And let's get these outdoors and out of the aquaponics greenhouse. We'll be back in here and just check out all the plants we've got going on. But let's go get this done first. All right, guys, so here is our fabric pot. These things are pretty popular online. Uh, I actually got these on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Um, these things usually run a little bit small. So if you're planning on getting like a five gallon pot, you probably actually want to buy a seven gallon pot. Uh, I found that that turns out uh, pretty good. And that's what this is here. This is about a seven gallon pot uh, by name, but I think it's actually around five gallons of material. So I've just got some basic garden soil. What I'm gonna do is shovel that in here and then we'll start to get our plants situated. I think what I'm gonna do for plants is I'm gonna do some uh, tomatoes, some uh, squash, and also some beans and try to grow all three in the same pot. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So let's get started. guys and we've got four of these fabric planters fully planted um, with a combination of 
four zucchini plants or summer squash plants, two little groups of uh, cherry tomatoes. I probably have to cut these back so it's only one or two. And then we got one or two uh, bean plants in the middle. And this is something I'm gonna have to uh, run either a stake or a vine um, pole for, like a bean pole, so that they don't just fall over. But hopefully they survive the night and I can continue to work on these guys tomorrow. We also have a woodchuck underneath the shed, so hopefully all of this hard work doesn't just become woodchuck food tomorrow morning. So hopefully <laughs> all of these plants will be here tomorrow. One other thing which is kind of interesting is this uh, watering stake. It's a plastic watering stake. Essentially it just screws onto a bottle and then it's got a little drip nozzle that you can adjust the flow of and then you just stick that down into uh, your soil especially if it's going to be a hot day just to keep your soil moist. Uh, I read that these fabric planter pots dry up really fast because they've got so much surface area that's exposed to the sun and to the wind and so hopefully using these will help to keep the soil a little bit more moist but actually the reason they caught my eye in the first place is because it seems kind of like something you could use in an aquarium and so uh, I might use this for live feeding things like brine shrimp and just slowly dripping them into tanks to feed fish over time so multi-purpose little thing here and we'll see how we end up using it all right guys I know what you might be thinking Greg this is a fish channel why are you planting so many vegetables this isn't a gardening channel well Hopefully a lot of these vegetables are going to end up as food for my fish. I've got a 40 gallon breeder full of plecos and I'm feeding them either a full can of green beans every single day or an entire zucchini, cucumber or summer squash every single day. So if I can manage to grow a lot of those either in this greenhouse or outside that's going to cut down on the food bill for the fish. So hopefully that's what ends up happening. All right, we're back in the greenhouse. It's getting dark outside. We've got to spend the rest of this video in the greenhouse. I've got a few things to show you. The first of which is some roots that I took out of the ground a year ago when I started to dig the foundation for this greenhouse. Where we're standing right now was basically mature shrubs. It was uh, a combination of rhododendrons and azalea plants. And I'm not exactly sure which roots belong to which species of uh, tree or shrub, but we've got some of those that we saved when we pulled all of that out of the ground to make space for this greenhouse. I wanna take a look at what those look like and see if those might be something we can use as driftwood in our aquariums. If you guys didn't know, azalea is actually a plant that people use in aquariums and it's more commonly known as spiderwood. It's actually the Chinese azalea plant, I believe. Very common in China, hard to get your hands on in the United States, but there's plenty of native azalea type plants in the US they're all over the place in everyone's yard basically so we saved some of those plants by transplanting them but we did end up killing a few of those as we cleared the ground for this space so let's take a look at what some of those roots look like and see if we can use them all right check these things out some of these are currently um, wet because they were actually in the pond I was finding that frogs uh, and other little critters were jumping into the pond and having a tough time getting out so I ended up tossing a few of these in the pond just to give them a place to grab a hold of and uh, get themselves out of the pond now you can see this is a pretty big root structure here and the plant itself was chopped off a year ago and what's left are all of these intricate, really beautiful 
roots and I literally pulled this out of the ground and then knocked all of the dirt off of it and then tossed it in a pile uh, all winter long. So it's been drying out. It's only wet because I tossed it in the pond. But I think it's got some character. I think some of the small rootlets may end up falling off and might not make uh, a long-term good piece of driftwood. But that's one of them there. We got uh, a smaller piece here, which is kind of cool. We've got like a flowy piece here that goes all off in one direction, which is kind of cool. We got a similar one here. And then we've got a gigantic one. Look how big that stump is. A gigantic one here. So I think at least one or two of these might be worth saving and transforming into a piece of driftwood. Maybe attaching it to a piece of slate and throw it in aquarium and see how it does. Again, I'm not exactly sure which species these came from, but um, I know that the roots of a lot of these plants are a lot more dense than the branches are, so they're going to hold up quite a bit longer underwater. Uh, and they are a pretty good choice for driftwood. Anyways guys, that's the pile of roots. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, and now for a walkthrough of the greenhouse. You may notice it's nice and quiet in here. I just turned the pump off for the video. I'll turn it back on after we leave. But as you can see, we've got quite a bit of stuff going on here. A little bit less now that we've taken all of those soil plants out of here. But let's start over here. We do have all of these string beans, which are growing nice and tall. I purposely put these against the side wall here so that I could run uh, string up the side wall to allow them to sort of train up the wall of the greenhouse. And all of the sun comes from this direction, so these are not going to block any of the sun to any of the other plants in the greenhouse. We do have a number of pots, net pots, that are still empty. I think what I'm actually going to do is uh, replant some lettuce seeds. These lettuce plants never really bounce back after they sort of got too long and leggy. Uh, they all sort of fell over and even though they've got a constant supply of water here in these uh, Rockwell cubes in the net pots, they've never bounced back. They never sort of stood up on their own. Um, they're just sort of at a standstill here. I'm, I mean, I might be able to help some of them back up or cut some of them back so that they have a better chance, but I wasn't too happy with that lettuce start, so I might just start some more lettuce and see how that does. We've got our rosemary, still very, very small. Again, not really growing a whole lot here. And then next to it, we've got our hot peppers which have grown a little bit. I think they've doubled in size since we last looked at them. But again, they're not growing too, too fast. Um, one of the things that I knew when I built this greenhouse is that it didn't get direct sunlight for many hours of the day. So we're going to grow things in here, but it's not going to grow super fast. Um, the advantage of that is that it doesn't get super hot in here either because we do have some shade. So pros and cons, we'll see how well we uh, end up doing here with growing plants. And if it doesn't work out, maybe we just grow more fish instead. Um, over here we've got some cilantro, which is doing pretty good. This row is cilantro as well. We got plenty of uh, nice new growth and leaves growing in the cilantro. Again, over here we got some more lettuce, which is sort of not standing up, but oh well, tried at least, right? Uh, we've got a lot of cherry tomatoes here. They're growing, they're just not growing fast. We got more lettuce, a whole tray of lettuce that's just very, very sad. There's almost nothing here that I think is worth saving. So we'll give it another week or two, and what we'll probably do is start some more lettuce over there. 
and then we may actually replace all of these pots um, throw them out if they don't grow at all we're also going to have to at some point uh, separate some of these plants if they ever do start to take off and we ever do get a week that's not just cloudy and rain uh, if that sun ever does come out hopefully these will start to take off and grow but we do have some more uh, cherry tomatoes over here those are the three tanks here that have our rafts for our aquaponics plants and then over here we move into more of our aquatic stuff but we also have some other things to look at here namely some bonsai plants you might have seen a recent video that I did about creating a bonsai this is the first one that I made actually no this is the first one that I made and then this is the second one that I made here and the third one over here and then the fourth one that I recently did on a live stream with River Life Rack Cross is uh, this one here and I think they all turned out pretty well uh, I'm eventually gonna move these outdoors we'll talk about that in a future episode but for now they're sitting in the greenhouse and our little Mr. Sweet Potato Head plant here that everyone wanted to see grow. We do have a lot of growth here with roots, but I've been growing this for, I don't know, a month and a half, and I don't see any slips. I don't see any growth out the top of this plant at all. So I'm about ready to give up on this guy. Um, just taking up space but who knows if I see something poking out the top maybe we'll keep them around our dwarf banana plant from H2O plants is doing very well uh, we've got a few smaller plants underneath here we've got the one large plant here and I would say we've gotten probably twice as many leaves on this plant just in the last month or two that we moved it out to the greenhouse a lot of new growth and uh, very healthy growth as well um, I think a lot of that is due to the fact that I repotted this and it seems to be doing a lot better in the larger pot however now that it's growing and there are multiple plants in there I may need to repot it again and maybe split it up to take some of the smaller plants out of there so we'll see about that now we have a number of floating plants to talk about. We've got some water hyacinth here. We just got a few of them. I think we've got four or five of them. We've got the frog bit that we got at a recent auction, which I was super excited to get. And we've got some um, duckweed and dwarf water lettuce and other things mixed into all of the floating mat that's back there as well. This stuff is done all right. I wouldn't say it's uh, exploding at this point, but again, a lot of this stuff just isn't getting enough light yet. So hopefully, if the uh, rain ever stops, we'll get some growth out of this. This is the plant that I love, sensitive plant. Uh, I'm super happy that I, I was able to pick up a few pieces of this uh, at Uncle Ned's Fish Factory recently. And what I did was I went ahead and put it in this floating uh, basket and then I anchored that basket to the side wall here so that it wouldn't float all around and disturb the plant um, and as you can see it's sort of in its curled up version the sensitive plant but um, when the Sun comes back out it will unfurl and those leaves will be nice and big once again we got some more water hyacinth we got some more dwarf water lettuce um, in these tubs also you'll see we moved our mystery snails so we've got the larger um, brown or chestnut versions here we've also got some smaller golden mystery snails that we picked up at Uncle Ned's while we were there picking up uh, the pond plants so I have moved a lot of those out here hopefully they will do well and grow and hopefully reproduce hopefully we get some egg clutches out of those snails at some point and we'll see how they do that's about it for out here just a lot of green water these are the three tubs I'm gonna move the majority of my fish out to uh, once I get that filter installed 
But anyways, guys, that is a look at the progress of all of the plants out here in the greenhouse. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for this week's video. Another long day out here in the greenhouse. It always seems to turn dark too fast to get a whole lot accomplished, but I guess that's life, and we just do as much as we can with the time that we have. One last thing that I've been considering and looking at are overflow screens for out here in the greenhouse and also for the new fish room that I'm about to build down in the basement. Now, I've traditionally used this style of overflow screen. It's a slip fitting, so it fits right into a bulkhead and it's easy to pop out, it's easy to clean, and it's easy to insert back into the bulkhead. I love these, I think they work really well. Except for the fact that out here in the greenhouse, there's a lot of little bits and pieces and floating plants and roots and stuff that's just sort of tossing around inside these ponds and it just seems to coat these overflow screens a little bit too fast. And so I was looking for uh, an alternative to these which may offer me a little bit more surface area and a little bit longer in between needing to clean them. And that's when I came across these low profile overflow screens. And I've installed one so far. Uh, I've got five more to install. And I'd say it's doing pretty good. Um, the biggest difference is the fact that, like I said, it's low profile, so it sticks very close to the side wall of the tank. It doesn't stick way out, uh, which is good because if you're cleaning and you bump into it, there's less leverage, like you're not going to crack your glass. Um, if there are fish swimming around or if you've got a net in a tank, it's less likely to get snagged on this because it's a lot closer to the side of the tank. But the one thing that uh, attracted me to it the most is the fact that it looks like it has more surface area than this guy. And um, it has a larger uh, like height to it, which is actually important because as the water level, as the bottom part gets clogged up, there's a uh, water pressure head height that's sort of pushing back down, gravity is pushing back down on that water. And if there's like scum and stuff that's starting to cake up on the bottom, at a certain point, there's enough pressure that it might push that through um, this bulkhead, whereas this one would probably just get completely covered and you might have a tank that overflows. Anyways, that's my theory. That's what I'm gonna test out here within the next couple weeks. And hopefully it means less maintenance out here in the greenhouse. But we've always got more projects to work on out here. And as I said, the biggest thing coming up is tearing down the fish room, which is going to be sad, but also a lot of fun. This is a milestone for this channel. That fish room has been set up for five years. And I think this is the point in time where it just needs to change. So again, if you live in the Massachusetts area, or if you want to drive to Massachusetts and pick up my fish room, I'm looking to sell the eight 40 gallon breeder aquariums, which are all pre-drilled, come with the bulkheads and the two by four stand and any of the drain plumbing that you think you can salvage. If you're interested in all that, if you want to start up your own fish room, it's basically ready to go. I mean, I have set that up for five years and I haven't had a single leak. I've bred thousands of fish out of that fish room so far. So if you're looking for that type of setup, uh, I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos of that rack system. Make sure to send me an email and uh, if you want it, come get it. Anyways, that's all I've got for you for this week's video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.